team. That's right, folks. Welcome back. Part four of the series. Um, last time we left off doing these uh, breakdowns right here at the three minute mark. So continue uh, where we left off by adding this riser here. A little reverse synth. There she is, right at the three minute mark, right where we wanted it. Perfect. Let's title it up rev symbol and now i'm going to start filling in this middle part starting off with these monk coder ohms that we made in the first part here check that out if you ain't seen it uh copy them over to the three minute mark or so and then um right when the drums kick in i'm gonna actually want them to be a little bit uh, lower so i'm gonna kick on utility here utilize utility and lower them up in volume the reason why I do this is so that, you know, if I want to do volume changes later, I don't mess that up. I can just do the fades with the utility and keep the volume channel without automation. Makes it easier. And here we go. I will do my little yellow line trick. The yellow line trick. Well, that's not my yellow line trick. It's the yellow line trick. A lot of people use it. Good stuff. Makes your fades nice and smooth. You just select your area and then uh, get that little yellow line however you want it. And perfect, right at the one minute mark. That's where we want it. And then I'm gonna put another fade over here right at the three minute mark or so, right before it, a little bit before it. Uh, just cause I think it'd be best just to keep that note a little bit ending right before, kind of like where you see the, the stylus fades, the hysteria fades start. That's where this, that's where this will end. So uh, yellow line trick once again. And then from here, we are going to double up on our kicks that we previously added. Um, if you remember from part two, the ticking clock trick, we were doubling everything and making it faster in time. So with this, I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to double it up and make everything, um, I'm going to half time it, make everything slower in time. Oops. And um, so that way you have that like contrast, something's building up in speed making it faster and then something is slowing down I like I'm all about contrast so um, another thing I wanted to add here was the uh, snare generator also created by Mr. Bill I will put the link for that in the description and the reason why I'm adding more snares I know we already have plenty of snares with the other stylus uh, kits but I'm just adding a little bit of emphasis and kinda as I just said um, I like to you know, create contrast. So the stylus stuff is very complex. It's a very complex drum beat. I would also like to have a very like simple drum beat in the background. Um, so if we mute these, kind of you hear this uh, very simple kick and snare. And the advantage of using this uh, snare generator is once again that you can tune it. So I have it tuned to 222 hertz, which is right where the fundamentals of the snare are. Anyways, we're just kind of using that to our little advantage with our harmonic system. And um, very discreet. You can barely hear it in the back. It's just kind of for emphasis. You know, most of the drum work is being handled by the Looperator Stylus Stutter Edit Bus thing that we made in the previous episode. So, um, I do want to add a little bit more percussion. We're going to add some djembes here using our stylus once again. And I'm kind of speeding through this stuff because we're just embellishing. We're not really adding any cool, like, you know, neat little tricks or anything. We're just embellishing. And uh, so we're going to double time our djembes. And I'll actually go a little bit more into depth about uh, some more uh, advanced features of stylus here. Or not so much advanced, but just kind of like interesting nuances that occur when you're using this plugin. Um, so first of all, I will mute or um, turn off the stylus for the sections that I don't want it, only because there are some times when uh, I find that, at least on my computer, sometimes it plays when I don't want it to, like even though there's no MIDI information, or sometimes it's off when I do want it to, like right now. Um, and that has to do here with this uh, host sync um, function. Um, you can play the stylus in the background without having any inter inter MIDI information. But I, I do like to have the MIDI information there just to see when it actually is supposed to be playing. Um, so we'll just duplicate that there where I want it. And um, like I said, we'll have it automated to be turned off 
where I, uh, where I don't want it, right here through the mixer and the um, speaker on. So it's off when I don't want it, on when I do. And um, like I said, there's a little nuance that occurs on, on, on my system for some reason. I've had it happen. But uh, let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's throw on some effects here. I'll be using this 12 dB bandpass from the Auto Filter plugin. Um, go ahead and mess with some with some frequency sweeps here. And uh, oh yeah, let me let me name it. Can't forget to name it. Got to name it real quick so keep everything organized. And if you hear it in the background now with uh, the kick and snare that we just added. Nice little, uh, nice little simple beat in the background, and then we got our complex stuff on top there. So, um, from here, I'm gonna start to affect the djembe with. Uh, I will use multiple LFOs. So I got this uh, Max for Live LFO. I also have the built-in LFO from the Auto Filter plugin, and I am gonna throw on ping pong delay for some uh, crazy bounciness. Ping pong bounciness. So first things first, I will map the frequency to the LFO. And this allows me to do like a few, it, it gives me more precision than the built-in LFO. Um, so I will set the shape here to triangle, adjust some stuff like the jitter, which you don't normally get in your uh, in your built-in LFO from the plugin. Um, and you get some cool sounds like that. pretty neat um, so it does have a built-in LFO I'm aware of that but like I said the Max for Live LFO gives you some cool functionality like jitter and other things and that allows your sweep to be has a bit of more of like a, a random element to it you know like we were saying the quantum chaos so once again you just map that frequency to the Max for Live LFO and I will also use the built-in LFO, so I'm doing like a double LFO, which um, gives you like really quirky, like sweepy sounds. Like it's almost like a wah pedal, just out of control. You know, like an idle wah pedal instead of idle hands. You got that idle wah kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And um, I like to call this the Hershey Kiss LFO uh, trick. So pretty cool. Looks like a little Hershey's Kiss just dancing around. Nice, real, real sweepy. Um, quantize it here to the thirds, just like that. And from there, I'll tighten it up a little bit with some glue compressor. Just bring out all them, uh, or flatten out all them transients. Bring out some of the softer parts, kind of even everything out. Definitely a fast attack, fast release kind of a thing. Usually when I set compressors, I like to see that needle bounce in tempo with the um, the rhythm. So I just adjust the range here, set it to soft, and uh, just make sure that needle is jumping with the peaks that I want. So next, um, I'm gonna actually change the pitch of the djembe and we're going to do a little automation trick which you do by going into this little configure menu right there and inside a stylus you have to actually set it to be enabled so you go to this menu midi learn and enable host automation otherwise it won't work so from there you click your uh, your setting your, which in this case is the pitch so uh, once again you go to your configure here and you set your uh, pitch setting so I'm going to lower it to minus seven give the djembe like a deeper deeper sound and we're gonna do this little automation trick so this is pretty cool um, right here during the, the breakdown I want it to sweep up in pitch so we'll do our little yellow line trick and from here it's gonna drop down in pitch and then I'm gonna have it sweep up that so kind of gives a little bit more uh, emphasis to that breakdown right maybe a little bit of a higher pitch there something like that let's see here okay and also uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of this but if you're not if you hold option 
and adjust the uh, yellow line here where it turns yellow. You can actually turn these, the uh, line into a curve, which gives it kind of more of like an exponential like increase in feel right there. And see, there it is. It's playing on its own again. I have to stop it, which is why I did that whole little uh, um, speaker on automation. Or whatever but here let's uh i'm gonna do <laughs> one more little sweepy trick so i guess it could be a triple lfo if you if you uh, want to consider it that and at this point we're gonna start working on this uh breakdown part which you heard in the intro um start to actually evolve the song a little bit from here um so what i'm gonna do is create a uh uh high pass and a low pass. I'm going to use both to do a very wide band pass at first. And then uh, I'm going to narrow it out and kind of sweep it through specific frequencies in a way that I want it. Um, which you can't necessarily do with the auto filter. As the name implies, the auto filter automatically does it how it wants. So does the LFO based on your settings. So what I'm going to do is use automation here to um, make my own kind of LFO sweep. A very slow... Uh, very in particular one so I'll highlight this area and I'm gonna have the uh, the low cut sweep up and then have it sweep down you can see that in the graphic display there gives it a cool little feel for the breakdown pretty much so let's duplicate that a few more times and I'm going to make like a, a curved sweep up at this point, using the option command, option click on the yellow line, and I will sweep it down again from there. Bam. Okay. And eh, we'll just keep it right there. See how that sounds. Uh, sweep it back up. Make a little M. Kind of looks like it says jam. If only it's AJM. All right, and then from there, I am going to select my high cut frequency, and we are going to do a a band pass sweep, an automated band pass sweep, or a triple LFO, as I like to call it, the uh, Hershey Kiss style triple LFO. And for this one, I'm going to do like a uh, like an M. You know, just sweep one up, sweep one down, and um, bring it back down from there. So check this out. Right there. So you can see the whole automation sweep working in a fashion that we want it to. And you'll see why I did the automation instead. I know we could have done something similar with the auto filter style thing. But I want it to open up and... Uh, create a narrow versus a wide band pass and for that yeah i mean you, you basically have to automate so um you can look at both lanes here that's what the uh the, the top one is what the low cut is doing the bottom one is what the high cut is doing and we got ourselves a hershey kiss triple lfo interesting little trick for the um for the breakdown and it's going to give it a nice little feel once we start to add everything else on top of it um so I know it took a little time to do all that stuff, and it will come in handy, trust me. So next, um, we need to add some more um, melodies, some more melodic structures to the breakdown, and I have just the thing for the trick. So the Casio Bouncer is a really cool preset. Um, if you notice, I like to use a lot of presets, and there's a reason for that. Um, on, on my computer, I don't necessarily have the greatest computer, um, but I've had sessions crash before on me. Like, I'll spend a lot of time sculpting a sound inside of Omnisphere and, like, really going all out on it. And then I open up the session, and for some reason, it goes back to default. So I lose my sound. And so just throughout the years, I've kind of defaulted to using a lot of presets because worst comes to worst, I can always bring it back, right? There we go. 
so I've gotten really used to like learning presets and knowing presets and um, I don't really alter them too much inside of the synth itself in case of things malfunctioning um, I'll use outside plugins like the RP delay right here to um, alter the sound so by using third-party plugins in combinations with uh, VST synths and different things like that I can kind of create my own sounds with presets I am using presets but I'm sculpting them in ways that are unique to my own situation um, so love it or hate it that's how I do it for now until I get a, a better computer check out my patreon that doesn't exist and give me money <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll make one eventually because I do really need a, a better computer. Seriously. Um, so yeah, I'm going to duplicate that a few times and I'm going to have it uh, sweep in using our handy dandy little fade in trick. The yellow line trick. And I'm going to have it fade in from the end of the uh, breakdown here. and Or from the end of the burst section, I guess, if you want to call it that. And it will uh, fade into the... Uh, breakdown right there uh, he's having another mental breakdown oh shit yeah I need a new computer fuck I do I need a better computer do more sessions do more crazy stuff use less presets <laughs> there we go um so I definitely am gonna add some guitar here as you heard in the intro um, hopefully the latency isn't too bad on this crappy computer and um, that'll be part five so stay tuned folks hope you guys are uh, looking forward to that one it's gonna be fun live guitar <laughs> 